Hey, what is up guys? Today we'll be showing you a quick install guide for PBX in a Flash, which is a phone system completely based off open source software. It's com completely free. This platform will install all the software able to use using like an IP phone or a cell phone or making calls internally or externally. Some of the features include fax to email, voice services, or some intrusion detection to keep the bad boys away. Uh, there are a few things that you're going to uh, consider today. And some of them will be uh, like a PC or a server, preferably a server, um, at least one gigs of RAM, 80 gigs hard drive space, dual core processor, and at least a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive to actually read the software. Uh, if you're using something more towards four or eight calls or more in your company, I would definitely recommend something a little bit more uh, robust. Uh, definitely a server, roughly between two to four gigs of RAM, uh, probably 160 to 250 gigs of hard drive space for voicemails or any type of uh, uh, voicemail callings. Of course a good quad core processor or dual core will still work just fine but if you're processing things like G729 calls um, you definitely need something that, that will uh, that will definitely work on the processor. And of course a DVD recorder or a DVD RW drive to copy or do backups if possible. If all else you definitely need a broadband connection with guarantee of outside access. So you have to make sure that that box or server can actually access the internet. So we, we will be trying to uh, obtain the actual PBX in a flash software. And here's a few steps here. Uh, the main thing you end up going to their website pbxinaflash.org As you can see I've already been here before. And one day when you are, are having more information or uh, want to figure out a few more things, um, go to the website here. They have a lot of wikis and documentation, how to configure certain things, a lot of new uh, tidbits or uh, added processes, just any new modules that they come out with. They normally put this on their page so you can know exactly how to get, get to it and know what to do with it. Um, so you click on the download here. Not sure what happened to that page here, but click on PBX in a flash dot sourceforge.net. Which is a new page for me. So you can click on download PBX in a flash files. Now from this website here, you have to kind of know what kind of PC or device are you planning on using. And they do have 64-bit or 32-bit architecture. So you really need to find out what kind of architecture that PC or server um, has. Um, for this build here, we'll be doing 32-bit. But uh, I think they automatically add that into their file here. I'm sorry, Rio. So we'll do 32-bit here. Is this I'm running IE or in Explorer? It might take me a little bit to download, which is a pretty hefty file. So for this file here, you might need a DVD recorder to actually get this file, since it's over 700 meg megabytes. You might want to go back and get a smaller build. Okay, so it looks like uh, the most latest build would be over 700 megabytes so you definitely need to have some kind of DVD ROM or DVD recorder to actually uh, uh, copy these files so once I copy these files once they download it would take roughly about 10 to 15 minutes it kinda depends on what kind of connection that you're using alrighty so for this uh, portion of the video we already downloaded the ISO for PBX and the Flash. You're going to be using a program to use ISO. I recommend maybe Power ISO, which is free, and the link will be in the description at the bottom. Um, once you install this program, you can pretty much uh, uh, get a, a DVD ROM or DVD recorder. So you can actually copy this uh, file onto DVD since it's bigger than 700 megabytes. 
once you do that uh, you can actually pop it right into the server and you can start the entire process of getting it installed keep in mind now that this program will wipe this entire hard drive it will pretty much install a clean build from scratch so if you have any important documents on that computer or server you might want to save that and back it up um, before going through this process and once you did all that when you put this CD in it will ask you a few questions like your root password um, or where you how you want the hardware to be installed you can go through the, the typical default unless you want something special like uh, LVM or uh, uh, special partitions but if not you can let the build uh, finish the process once it completes the actual process you will be end up at this screen here and at this screen here we give you different features that you can install with PBX in the flash I uh, wanted to the first feature you end up choosing unless you want a uh, special a different kind of telephony engine like Yates or free switch as you can see you have different options here uh, PBX and flash server VPN flash server switch Yates CRM which is pretty much for uh, for databasing and customer service and this build here which you go keep it very simple if possible you're going to do PBX and flash Okay, I think my screen just died here in one second. Ah. Okay, so we will be choosing PBX and a flash for this build. Okay, now this is a very vital uh, screen here. Uh, you have a few options. You can install different versions of asterisks and also the uh, different kinds of interfaces as well. Uh, we do support all of these versions, but I would definitely recommend something that, excuse me, that something that can run uh, without any issues and something that has long time support. So in this case, we will be using purple. P, uh, PBX in a flash module here. You can do asterisk dot ten. That's fine. You do asterisk ten. I'm sorry. You can also do brown, green, yellow, and also extra drivers. But for this build here, we need to do 1.8. That's the most common one, and it does have uh, long-term support. Also, I'm actually running this inside of a virtual box. So I don't have an actual box to show you with. So this is running in a virtual box. And you can also do this by testing uh, maybe VMware or virtual box. So if you have any questions on or have issues with configuring the Azure server, you can definitely try it on a virtual machine um, and work out the bugs if possible. Then you can actually put it on a actual server. Okay, now from this screen, they will be asking you a lot of questions on how you want to configure, what kind of database that you want, uh, a fairly technical uh, uh, questions that they're going to ask you, uh, but you might want to pay attention on some of the, the questions that they ask you because once it does it the first time, it's pretty much set for, for all eternity once you get it set correctly. So you definitely have to spend a couple of hours on really monitoring the the uh, the traffic here monitor the screen because they occasionally will ask you a few questions.
this is definitely tell you that it, if it detects any older versions it gives you an option to to upgrade or use the current version on the CD so we want to choose Y The reason why I choose Y because I've I've already uploaded the I already downloaded the the newer version, so it was pretty much the same build. But if I ask you that, you can click No, it will automatically download the new version for you. But we're going to skip through a lot of this here. Yeah, so. When you guys uh, work on this part, it will ask you a lot of questions. So feel free to actually sit down and read them all if if you want to, or to really pay attention to some of them. Uh, they will be very important later on when you actually finish building the Asterisk server. Okay, now from this screen here, it asked me a few questions. Do you want to enable the advanced settings? In asterisk, um, you can choose no. I choose yes because there, if there's any type of debugging or development that needs to be done, it gives me the option to have that enabled up front without actually manually enabling that later. We'll be choosing the number two because we are in Eastern Standard. Now this is also a crucial moment in your build. Um, you have different versions of free PBX, which is the web interface to control your asterisk server. You have different versions 2.9, 2.10, 2.11. Uh, for certain builds, I found out that using the most and the latest and greatest is a little bit resource hungry. So if you have a older PC or older server that you're using this on, I would I would recommend using 2.9 because it's not quite as heavy on the box itself. Uh, only difference really between 2.9 and the rest of the other two is just the interface. They really clean up the interface on it. Um, but for this build, we would do 2.9, and you can actually update the interface later. Now from this screen you have the option of creating your own password to log into the actual server or you can also have it generate the password. For more security I would recommend you have the PC or the server generate the password for you and you make sure that you write it down and keep it in a safe place. So I try using a shorter password and it's saying that the password is a little too short must be a minimum of eight characters your password has seven characters try again so let's try it again perfect this is very vital if without this uh, you, you you allow it to get your box hacked or your server hacked in this way it makes it as secure as possible even from your old hands it's a flash configuration setup summary
So this is pretty much a, uh, a, a summary of what you've done so far. You've selected the MacConfig, which you're able to modify the asterisk, the asterisk program before installing it. You created the, the time zone, you've set the version, and you already set the password. So we're just going to click here to con enter here to continue. And that's a tidbit, folks. Uh, a lot of these steps are automated, so uh, it, it will tell you, you kind of spit out on the screen what it's doing so you won't be lost or have any questions. It will pretty much tell you what it's doing.